This video is sponsored by the following people. Please click the links in the description below. Yeah, forge welding is just so that you understand exactly what it means. Most people's idea of welding is using an electric arc. Yeah. In the old days, an oxyacetylene torch, you would put two pieces of metal close to each other and you heat them up to the edges melt and you might put a filler metal in there and that molten metal will adhere to both sides and you've got a welded joint. Hi, I'm Graham Clark from Clark Knives, Clark Knives in Wiltshire. Uh, we run bladesmithing courses, axe making courses, and we also provide a service for heat treatment services for other knife makers and we manufacture Damascus Billy. Uh, for a knife making industry. Forge welding works without melting metal. It's quite different. And what you do is you get two surfaces. The two surfaces come together flat. These surfaces here, they're nice and clean. And if you press them together hard enough at a high enough temperature, what will happen is the crystals, remember steel is made up from little crystals, just like a piece of rock. The crystals will start to grow across that, bound, that grain boundary, across the joint. So when those crystals join, then you've got a crystal which is half in each piece. And if enough of them join, you've got a continuous crystal structure from one piece to another. It's a very useful way of joining pieces of steel together. You can join two identical pieces of steel together perfectly, but you can also join dissimilar metals. I know, for instance, in the aircraft engine industry, they will join steel to titanium so that they've got titanium where they want it, steel where they want it, the two join together. You can get those crystals to join across the grain boundary between the steel and titanium, and it makes a super strong joint. So that's what we make use of. It's just getting the conditions right for that forge weld to work. It can be a bit dodgy sometimes, but yeah, it works. It works very, very well. That's right. That's exactly how it happens. You see, it also makes, in my opinion, it makes a very strong and an even better joint. You see, when you melt the metal and it solidifies, you've got a cast structure. So you've got forged metal on either side. The two pieces of metal here, you've done a weld prep down the metal and you've run down there with your welding rod and molten metal is joined into both sides of your, of your weld joint. That metal is liquid and it solidifies. Now the crystal structure in solidified metal is quite different from that in forged metal. It's nowhere near as strong. Welded joints can be strong, but it's not as strong as a forged piece of metal. With solid phase welding, that's the correct name for forge welding. Solid phase welding, i.e. you're welding two bits of metal together while they are solid, they're not liquid. Solid phase welding causes crystals to grow across that joint boundary. So therefore, you've got the same structure in your weld as you've got in your parent metal. And in fact, there isn't really a weld structure at all. The parent metal is growing from each side of the joint and making a continuous piece of metal. If you take a piece of decent Damascus, for instance, and do a, cut it up and put it under a microscope, you, you won't see a weld line as such as you would with a liquid weld, uh, with a fusion weld, as it's called. Yeah, it is. Particularly if you've got the same materials or very similar materials that you're welding together. Damascus, for instance, a lot of people use 1080, 1084, 1095, with 15N20. 15N20 is very similar to the other three. Very slightly lower carbon content, and it's got a bit of nickel in. Because it's got the nickel in, the nickel doesn't etch. The plain carbon steel does etch. That's why you get black and white pretty pictures in your material. But the actual metal itself, they're very, very similar. So they're very easy to weld together, and that makes a very, very strong joint. Once your metal has started to become a little different, I can't say that I'm 100% familiar with what the strength of joints is. You, you're joining steel to titanium, for instance. I don't know whether the titanium or the steel governs the strength of that joint. But you, you, you're then joining metals which, if you actually melted the joint, made a, a weld, uh, a liquid fusion weld, that joint material will probably be so weak and crappy and full of horrible structures and cracks. They wouldn't hold together at all. Whereas by doing it with solid phase welding, you can get a very strong joint. So yes, I think it depends upon the metal. You, you Certainly you can get a very, very strong joint, yes. Yes ish i suppose is the right answer to that when you're welding the two metals together you've got to get pure metals growing crystals across the joint and when i say that i mean the surfaces have got to be clean so some materials are easier to weld than others for instance mild steel is very very easy to forge weld that's what the old blacksmith did what they call his wrought iron uh, wrought iron was actually quite a dirty form of modern day mild steel because they didn't have the ability to refine all the crap out of it the silicon and sulfur manganese and including 
illusions that you used to get in old-fashioned steel. That's why some people like to use it as cladding for Damascus, because you get that watery mark pattern on it when you etch it. Whereas mild steel has got all that stuff taken out of it. Mild steel is almost pure iron. It's 99 point, at least 8% iron. So the two surfaces forge well together very, very easily. Grain growth is quite quick at the temperatures that we are using. If you come to use more complex metals, then you're getting different compounds on the surfaces. You've got carbon or tungsten or whatever alloyed in there. You've got different molecules trying to join each other across the grain boundary. They still will, and I think in most cases, certainly on the steels and the knife making steels we use, I don't think there's any serious problem. Uh, it might get a bit of a problem when you start moving into stainless steel, but I'll come on to that later because that's, that's a different ball game altogether. Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not 100% sure that I know the answer, but I think I've got a damn good idea. As some of you will know, I run this treatment service. I've had several batches of steel coming through here, all the same steel from the same supplier. And as I've hardened them, we look afterwards, there is a crack running down the center. Now, we're talking about a piece of flat steel. It's got a core of high carbon steel, and it's got cladding on the outside. It's not that it's delaminating. It's not the laminate coming off the core. The actual core material itself is splitting right down the center. I've done a lot of research on social media, Google, or whatever. I've read an awful lot of bullshit, but I've also read a couple of articles that actually make sense. And it appears to be that when the cladding is very soft and the core material is coming up hard, what a lot of people don't realize is that when steel transforms, a high carbon steel transforms from the soft state to the hard state, it grows. It can grow anything from one to four percent in volume. Softer material on the outside doesn't do that. It just stays the same. And I can't actually work out in my head exactly what's happening, but it's to do with, as you quench it, the edge of the piece of metal cools first. So on the edge of the metal, where the laminates and the core are exposed. That cools, that piece of core material expands and the cladding material is holding it in place. And then it's holding everything in place and the piece behind it then starts to expand because that's gone hard as the cooling moved down into the blade. The piece behind it then expands and the piece in front, which is now held in roughly in place, but is now brittle, gets pushed out sideways as well, and it cracks down the middle. I've only had it happen on material that is clad with soft material. I've come across it more than just once here. Uh, when I was working in South Africa, there were guys who were making sand mai out there with a hard core material. They were using O1 as their core material, and they were using a ferritic stainless steel for the cladding, i.e. a ferritic stainless steel doesn't harden, it stays soft. And it seems to be this combination of very hardenable core material and cladding which stays soft, which causes that crack. As I say, the exact mechanics I'm not sure, but that combination doesn't seem to work well. I myself have made quite a bit of uh, sand mire with hardenable stainless steel cladding, and I don't seem to get that problem. I haven't made enough of it to say this is absolutely guaranteed not to happen, but all the stuff that I have made up to now, it does seem to be to get around. So it's something you have to be aware of, and please don't blame the heat treater every time your knife cracks. I've had that happen, and I've had people who won't come back to me anymore, and it's not my fault, it really isn't. Um, but I do think I know what causes it, so please bear with me, and. Uh, be prepared to talk nicely to me if it happens to you.